All right. Uh, just looking back, uh, obviously very disappointed in uh, you know in the outcome of that game. I, I felt you know we we played good enough to win the game. Again, too many critical errors. Um, you know, particularly uh, you know the turnover on the kickoff return. You know, which is basically giving them seven points, and and that's is very very frustrating. Um, can't stand to lose. Hate to lose. I know. I know everybody, our fans, um, hate it as well, obviously, and um, and are disappointed about it. And, uh, you know, this program's had such great tradition and won a ton of games over the years and, and are used to winning. And, uh, you know, and I, you know, I, I hate it for our fans that, that come out, support us, and fill that stadium and that are loud and into it and that are, that are great. They're great for our players and, and, you know, our staff and everybody. But you know, that's what I'm very disappointed about. And... Um, and we got to continue to work. We got to continue to get better. Um, you know, I think uh, when you when you think about making this jump from the American and and to the Big Twelve, you knew there was going to be some some transition parts of it that we probably wouldn't like. Um, but the bad thing about it is the one that's frustrating that, that hurts me so much is the fact that you know, there's at least three of these games we should have won and and we didn't. You know, where we shoot ourselves in the foot, uh, we make too many mistakes. And you know, and I think when you do lose. That way, it, it, it's a lot worse, and um, you know. But it, but you know, you think about, you know, we've outgained six out of the seven opponents that we played. Um, you know, we've outrushed five out of seven. We rushed for 250 yards over twice and lost both of those games. I mean, you know, it's crazy. You know, we're sitting here, we're stopping the run, and we're running the football at a high level. Usually, that translates into a lot of wins. Now, so what's the what's the outlier? What's what's the reason behind it? Now, I, I look at two things, and. and and number one is the turnover margin, and I think we're, I think we're over like 120, is somewhere in that range in the country in turnover margin. You're not going to win that way. And and the other thing is, uh, you know, scoring points in the red. You know, and I think a couple times this past week we went forward on fourth down. One was fourth and one, and had a great play dialed up, and we we didn't execute. And you know, the other one was fourth and four. You could argue we should have kicked at that point. You know, down 12. Um, you know, but but we didn't. We went for it, and we got to we got to execute and make the, make those plays. So, um, the red zone scoring and then turnover margin. You know, other than that, I think we've played good enough really to win to win at least three of these games. And now you're sitting there at five and two instead of two and five. So, um, but it's a fine line, and you got to do better. We got to do better as coaches. We got to do a much better job. You know, as coaches, particularly when you lose these close games, uh, there's something that coaches can do to help help those games um, and get over the hump. There's no question about it. And but I know this: we're not we're not quitters. We're not going to give up. We're not going to give in. We're going to keep fighting. I know our players are. Uh, you know, I was very proud of their resilience on Saturday. We I mean, we were down 15 in the fourth quarter. They didn't blink. They continued to play. It's unlike the week before. So that's growth of a team um, to keep fighting and keep playing and give ourselves a chance to win. And, you know, we're down three there in the last drive and, and had a chance to go and, um, and didn't get it done. So, so that, but that is the encouraging part with the energy that we had about that. And so we're going to look forward now to Oklahoma State. We're going we're gonna to carry that energy that we had into this game, which is an outstanding football team. Oklahoma State's five and two, um, have won three straight. Um, they're, they've got a lot of confidence right now. They're rolling. Um, and I think, it, you know, the switch they made, is a, I think it was around the third game, or fourth game, they kind of decided what they were going to do on offense. Early in the year, they were playing three quarterbacks. Um, and now they decided on the one quarterback, and they decided to hand the ball to zero. And, and that, that kid has been tremendous the last three games. Um, and, you know, he, he uh, Ollie Gordon's his name. Last week rushed for 282 yards and four touchdowns. 145 of those yards came in the fourth quarter when the game was still about a tied ball game. He had three touchdowns and 145 yards. And... They're just leaning on him, giving him the ball, and he's he's producing. Um, you know, defensively, they're very aggressive. Um, they base out of a three-down front. Um, you know, similar to an Iowa State type defense, where you got five DBs on the field, uh, and, and they can they can run. This defense is, is an explosive defense. Um, number four is their middle linebacker. He leads the Big 12 in tackles per game, and he's not very big, 100, 215 pounds, uh, what they list him as, but he can he can really, really run. I think the one thing that stands out about their defense is their speed. Um, he's got 71 total tackles and four sacks, um, one of the top linebackers in this league. And, um, you know, then I'm, I'm looking at their kicker. He's 17 for 21 this year. Um, he's a really good field goal kicker. We just played one, Baylor's guy. I think had a career day out there last week. So, um, you know, Going to Oklahoma State, um, I've never been there. I've heard 
a loud uh, environment. I think it's homecoming this weekend, so they'll be added in, in that regard. It's a night game. So, so all those things we have to prepare um, this week for a hostile environment and, um, you know, get our, get our guys ready to go. Questions? When you look at fixing the mistakes that have, have kind of been the margin, how difficult is it? Because it feels like it's you plug one gap and oh, yeah. another that, one that's it. It's open. very difficult. You know, it's not just one aspect, right? Um, you know, at times it's all three phases, you know, and I think that's the frustrating part, you know, and you fix this or, you know, you fix one aspect of the special teams and the other special team unit screws us, you know, with a, with a bad play. Um, you, know, you know, I think offensively, um, you know, there have been times where you know, I feel like it's been on third or fourth downs when we have, we've made our mistakes, and, and those are the big play downs where you have to make them. Um, you know, defensively giving up, you know, the big pass plays, I think, as you look throughout the season, that's been our nemesis, really. Um, we've done a lot of different things to try to fix that. We still hadn't got that done yet, and we've got to continue to try to work on that. Um, but, but, yeah, I mean, we're going we're gonna to keep fighting and keep, uh, you know, finding ways or try to find ways that, that will correct those mistakes. I don't like it when people – insinuate I'm not doing a good job or, or I'm failing or, or whatever. You, this is not your first rodeo. How, how do you handle this yeah. pers personally? Well, it's difficult. I mean, I think I don't, I don't know anybody that, that likes, you know, getting um, you know, negative things said about them. And, um, you know, and, but, but I, you know, the fact of the matter is we've lost these games and, you know, and it comes back to me. And so I take ownership of that. Um, I've got to do a better job, you know, and it trickles all the way down through our, our, our players. Um, you know, so all our staff, all the way through our players, everybody's got to take responsibility and load for it, but, but ultimately it's me. And, we, yeah, I've been here before. I didn't like it back then. I don't like it now, um, you know, but it's something you you, you got you to fight through and continue to get through the on the other side. Um, and, you know, and, and, and as you look back and, and you think about things that, that why did they happen before, you, know, you can try to prevent things from happening again. Um, you know, and you dealt with different circumstances a lot of different times as well. And so, you know, we came into this situation, you know, we knew what we were coming into. We knew we were going to a new conference in the Big 12 conference. You know, we knew we only had, I think, six returning starters out of, out of the 22. You know, that's not a whole lot. I put that in perspective. When I left App State, we had 18 returning starters coming back on a team when we left. You know, now we're in this new era where, you know, guys can leave. You know, we had players drafted off last year's team, three players drafted, and another one that made, you know, as a starter, as a free agent. And then, you know, several guys got in the portal and left. So we knew it was going to kind of be, we got a lot of new pieces coming in, and you're playing in a new conference. So we knew it was going to be challenges. Um, but again, the frustrating part is that we were, were, were good enough to win at least three of those, I feel like, and we didn't get it done. And that, that's, that is the part that keeps me up at night to know that, that we can do better and, and we, can, we can win those games. And so we get these opportunities in the future, hopefully, that we'll win. Keegan. You mentioned the fourth and one in the red zone with the fumble after the game, mm -hmm. <clears throat> saying that that surprised you because you had executed in practice and that had never happened in practice. Do you think your guys could be seeing that home crowd and like that support as maybe pressure other than the support it's supposed to be since they've kind of been unproven throughout the season? You know, I, I, that's, that's a good question. I hope not. I hope it's because uh, <clears throat> I want our guys to play fearless. You know, when you're out there, you play fearlessly when you're playing. You, you can't play thinking, oh, man, I hope I don't make a mistake. Well, you, you can't cut loose and play that way. And, you know, I think I, at times this year I've seen, you know, some guys do things on game day that they don't do during the week. Um, you know, some would say maybe the moment's too big and that, that kind of thing. Well, that has happened a few times this year. I, I, I can't put a finger on it. I, I want our guys to play fearlessly. I want them to coach fearlessly as well. Because uh, I think when you cut loose that way, man, you can be you can you can be as good as you your potential will allow you to be. Um, when you are holding back for some reason of fear of failure, then then you're not going to be. And so, um, you know, I don't know if that was the case on the fourth and one. I don't think it was. I think you know it was just a you know mistake and not holding the ball tight. But uh, you know, it's it's part of those things where you know you cut loose and you play. I mean. We've been running that play. I've been running that play for 10 years. You know, it's a great play. It's, it's hard to defend. I mean, we see it every Saturday. You know, you go turn college football on, you see a lot of those plays happen. So, and guys make them. And, and you know, our guys have made them. And so that's, that's frustrating when we don't, you know, and, and it's the one time we need to make it, you know, when it's the – because you may, that may be the only time that we get that opportunity, that chance, and you have to make it during that play. Um, so that's, that is a frustrating part. But all you can do is go back and continue to work on it and continue to practice and run those plays in those pressure situations. 
Um, we're going one on good on good against our defense. We're trying to you know simulate that. Um, we execute in practice, you know, and then sometimes in the game we have it. You mentioned the reputation Oklahoma State has on the road. Any Big 12 mm -hmm. atmosphere is going to be a bit raucous, but with the homecoming night yeah. game, as you mentioned, you've never been there, but you've heard about it. How do you replicate that in practice? You mentioned you have to prepare for hostility. Yeah. How do you replicate that? Well, going? you're not totally going to be able to replicate it. There's no way, you know, and, and also, you know, in the heat of the moment, when the lights are on, the camera, TV cameras are on, and everybody's screaming, you're not going to be able to re replicate that. The thing that we can do is, you know, we'll get crowd noise going. We'll, you know, we'll try to have, um, you know, create that where we, you can't hear the, 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 the communication piece. Um, you know, that's the thing that you're going to try to re replicate, but, but, but you really are not going to be able to. You know, our, our guys have, you know, we went to Pitt, I think, earlier in the year. It was loud. The student section was really loud. And I think our guys performed, you know, very well in that environment. So, um, you know, like to think we'll go in there and perform in this environment, and that will not be an issue. In, in terms of offensive identity, Miles and Corey re really had it going this past week. Is that something you lean on going forward, knowing some of the struggles Emory has had in the past mm -hmm. game? Yeah, you know, and we, we talked about it last week. We wanted to be able to lean on our running backs in that game, and we did. And they, got, you know, they responded. You know, both guys getting over 100 yards. It was great to see. I uh, mentioned this in the post game. Um, you know, Miles had the big touchdown run. I think it was third and three. Broke out. It was a long run, our, our longest rushing uh, touchdown this year, which is awesome. You know, we got to get more of that from our running backs. And um, it does. It takes pressure off the offense. It takes pressure off um, really everybody, quite honestly, in an offensive system if you can turn and hand the ball off and those guys can go make plays. Our offensive line did a really nice job of blocking up front and our tight ends um, on Saturday. And those guys did a good job of, of hitting the hole and making them pay. And, you know, anytime you can get two backs over 100 yards, it's a good day, you know. And, you know, and then that, that hopefully um, opens up the passing game and, and that we're able to hit. You know, we were able to hit Xavier, I think, what he had eight catches, two touchdowns. It was a good game for him coming off a game where he didn't have any catches, you know. So so we made an effort to get Xavier the ball and an effort to get the running backs the ball, and, and, it, and it, did a, it did a good job offensively with that. Following the game on Saturday, you mentioned the terms of energy. Juwan and Evan mentioned the Bearcat Council, a meeting they hold mm -hmm. on Sundays. Could you just kind of – Talk about how that all came about and what that means to this team during this tough time. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we, we talked about as a staff this summer, we felt we wanted to have a council that, um, that the players, you know, can express things that they need, that they would they like to see within our team and also promote leadership within the team. Um, I think it's a good thing, you know, to have because it's their team, you know, it's our players' team and I want them to have a voice and it's a way for them to communicate and, you know, we write down things that they say and, things that we can implement in our game, um, you know, game plan and game week, really, quite honestly. Um, and, and those guys, uh, and they show leadership in that regard. And I think that's a good thing. It's particularly when you're facing adversity like we are now, and they're coming and rising up, saying, saying great things and saying, you know, continue to stay tight, um, you know, as a, as a team, continue to pull for each other. And we saw that on Saturday and that energy and that those guys were pulling for each other on Saturday, the best we've done all year, in my opinion. Uh, you can just feel that from the sideline, and, and that's that's a great job by our leaders of our team. Yeah, <clears throat> Emory played against these guys last year. Uh, you guys struggled a little bit against the three three five of Iowa yeah. State, but does assumably that would help him, having yeah. seen that before? Yeah, I would hope so. Um, that would help him. And, um, you know, being, particularly being in that environment, you know, when you think about playing in that stadium, um, it, it's it's a really tight sideline in that stadium. The stadium, you know, it's right on top of you. Maybe as tight a sideline as I've I've seen, um, as you're watching the film. There's zero room there, and the fans are right on top of you. So it, that could be intimidating. But you know, having him having played there, hopefully, you know, it won't, it won't phase him. He's he, you know, he's played in the SEC. He's played in some big stadiums. You know, I, I don't think it'll phase him. Um, but as a football team, we have to, you know we have to know about that environment when you get in there. And but then you got to tune out all that. You know, you got to tune out all the things that are, that are going on outside of the field and in between the white lines and really focus on your job and what you have to do against the opponent. Is there anything specific they did to get their rushing offense going over the past three weeks? Did they change anything? I, I think I think philosophy, really. Um, they were searching early in the year for an offensive identity and what they wanted to do offensively. And, you know, this is coming from Coach Gundy. I mean, you know, and, and then when they really solidified on what they wanted to do offensively in their in their running scheme, um, it benefited uh, their running back because he feels very comfortable in what they're doing. Um, I think they're keeping it more simple. Um, 
and, and, and more repetitive in the same plays that they're running. And then he gets a chance to really see it, and, he's, and he is seeing it. And, and then here's the thing unique about this back. I mean, he's big back, he's 6'1", 211. He looks bigger on film, um, but he's got some speed. Like this guy, when he, when he breaks out and gets to the second level, you see DBs just falling to the ground and him hitting the hot sideline and, and, and going to the house. I mean, he's got eight rushing touchdowns. I mean, he's, he is a, a talented running back um, that, that when he gets to the second level, he can take it the distance. So you have to be able to try to hem him up and not let him get loose out in the secondary because the teams he's played in the last few weeks, I mean, they haven't tackled him. And, you know, he mentioned this um, last week in the fourth quarter when it was a tight ball game and you, and you knew that they were going to run the football, Oklahoma State was, and West Virginia couldn't stop him. You know, and he had 145 yards and three touchdowns and really kind of blew the game open there in the fourth quarter. <clears throat> Jonathan Thompson has had a few good games back to back. Can you just talk about his play and what went into that decision to insert him into the starting lineup? Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, Dorian was uh, banged up this past week, and um, and you know, so was kind of nursing an injury. Um, and JT got more opportunity at practice and, and really got probably majority of the practice reps this past week. Um, I do think he's gotten better and better and better each and every week, and he's a guy that's starting to play fast. Um, to pull his trigger, not to be tentative at the linebacker position. Um, and then for him to get this opportunity, and, and he made the most of it. I thought he, he went out and played a, a really, really good game and was downhill, was running sideline to sideline. Um, you know, he's a good young player for us, and we needed that We need that depth to be able to put in there because he really could play both inside positions there. Um, you know, and, and then Dorian got to play a little bit in the game, but uh, but it was good to see JT come in and, and get that start and get and, and make some plays. Not only get the start, but actually make plays. I think we got eight tackles maybe in the game. So um, I thought he played well, and, and he'll continue to play well but just because he does practice habits. I mean, he really really goes hard every day at practice. How do you handle a situation like Braden Smith, who has been a big play guy on offense, but on special mm -hmm. teams he's made, you know, two critical yeah. mistakes. Critical mistakes, you know, and I never would have guessed that and thought that. You know, that guy's played more ball than anybody on our team possibly. I mean, he, you know, he's been in a lot of situations, uh, not only as a as a receiver, uh, but also as a punt returner, kick returner. Played on a bunch of special teams, and um, you know, critical mistakes. Um, you know, in the BYU game and and now in this game, and uh, you know, catastrophic mistakes because they're giving up touchdowns. Really, you know, and and, and so. I think Braden is a guy who who has a lot of pride. Um, you know, it, it tears him up inside, and um, you know, but it, but it's something that we got to certainly look and see. All right, you know, does somebody else give us a better option there? You know, but I think I do think Braden. We do have confidence in Braden. Um, you know, I'm hoping that's a fluke. You know, that that we won't see that again. And um, you know, but because I, I, I do think he's a good player and, and he cares. You know, so. Um, Hopefully, that's just some, some unfortunate errors that, that won't happen again. How do you prepare for Gordon in practice, and, and who is that person? Yeah, I mean, it'll probably be several people, you know, because he's very unique. And I mentioned his size, but also his speed. So, you know, we're probably going to be a couple, two or three different guys that we put down there, some speed guys, Manny, Kobe, you know, be one um, that, that, that can show, show you – something, uh, some juice that when he, when he breaks outside, he can take the distance with it. Um, I think a lot of it comes um, up front, you know, with their blocking scheme and our guys getting fitting right and, and really uh, being where we're supposed to be. You know, uh, he does a good job. If, if somebody's out of position where he, he's got a good vision to be able to, you know, cut back and hit that open lane, uh, we have to have our guys where they're supposed to be. Now, you know, the good news is our guys up front have done a good job in the, past, in the running game uh, so far this year. And, and but this will be our biggest test to be able to stop the run this week. Uh, you know, I feel like um, a lot of the teams we've played, they have not run it consistently, so consistently as good as Oklahoma State has this week. So this will be our biggest test, and, and it really is going to start up front. And here, you know, having said that, their offensive line is good. Their offensive line has, has got a lot of older players on it, a lot of seniors um, up front, and. Um, you know, as I'm, I'm looking here, seniors, junior, senior, senior, senior. You know, four seniors that start up front, and I think, and then for them, they've been leaning on those guys and letting that running back, you know, pick and choose. So we got to do a great job with our defensive line and our linebackers filling those gaps. You mentioned the returners. Is it your plan right now to have Brayden and Xavier back there for Oklahoma State? And we'll, if not, who else could? We'll see. Um, I think we're going to get Ryan back this week. Um, you know, he's a guy that's been back there and uh, return games. We, we got great confidence in him. We've missed him 
uh, what's he missed the last three or four games, maybe. You know, I think Oklahoma was the last time he played. So um, he practiced Sunday. So hopefully he'll be back this week. So I think he may be in the mix. Braden will certainly be in the mix. Xavier will be in the mix. Xavier had a nice return uh, Saturday. Um, you know, so I think, um, but I do think Ryan will be a guy that, that will also look, get back there. DJ Taylor will be another guy uh, who has done that in the past that we'll, we'll get a look at as well this week. So then we'll see what we need to do on Saturday. <clears throat> when looking at guys on the edge, it feels like when Justin Watley is in, he's been able to get pressure on the quarterback. Is that, is he potentially earning a little bit more of a look there? Yeah, I mean, I think he's, you know, Coach Stu rotates those guys in up front, keeps them all fresh, and then, you know, you're you're looking to see, all right, who who's the guys making the plays, you know, and and if Watley certainly has, I, I mean, I, I'm like you, I've noticed where he's come out and made some plays, getting in the backfield, and um, you know, certainly if he's able to do that, then you want to play him a little bit more, you know. At the same time, we will rotate and, and continue to get those guys fresh and keep them in there. But Watley has a guy, is a guy that that, that plays. The last few weeks, he's played with a lot of good energy. Um, and, and been in the backfield some, and you know, you couple that with some of our other guys and Briggs and Corley. I think those guys have been playing at a consistent level as well, um, you know. And, and hopefully they'll get in the backfield and, and and keep this running back from from breaking through to the second level because that'll be key. All right, thanks. To the younger guys, as you're going through something like this, to try to come out on the other side and just get another win and get, you know, get this thing rolling the other way. Yeah, um, my message is to the younger guys on the team, you know, yeah, it sucks that we've been losing, but we just need to keep that energy like we had on Saturday. I felt like that was by far the closest we've been as a team with the energy and all the excitement that we had. It's just that we just got to keep bringing it. How did it feel breaking two guys for 100 yards? And it seems like you ought to win something like that, but uh, is that something you, you can see continuing? Yeah, I mean, we um, we had a great plan set out last week, and we I think we executed pretty well, having I think like 288 rushing. And I think that you know I think if we keep keep doing that, then I think we'll be keep getting successful with the run game. How much could having that explosive guy who can go for 60 and 70 yards help the offensive line from a conditioning standpoint to the point where you don't need to grind out three or four third down conversions every drive to try to get points? Uh, yeah, it's it's great for the O line because you know having those consistent runs. It's uh, we always thought you know it's hard to make the consistent plays for a long period of time. You know, seeing those like last week we had multiple long runs that really helped us out getting a better field position and not have to be out there as long. And I think it just helps everyone out on the offense rather than just the O line. One of the games, uh, you know, hey, keep coming out, and Dante said the same thing. What, what kind of reception have you gotten from students? I mean, I, I know I, I would venture to say most are not likely to challenge you on anything, but uh, <laughs> uh, what are you hearing? Um, just like, you know, there's always some people, all that, all the naysayers, but you got to block them out. And, you know, they're, all the students are still very proud of us, all proud of uh, who we are playing football. And just like they just want to still come out and support. Can you pinpoint the change in energy? Why was it different this past Saturday? Um, I think we just knew something was different that day on Saturday. And I think the help of the, uh, we called them the juice mob, all the guys who were like at the 50 yard line just constantly waving the towels. I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but uh, you know, they were just constantly yelling. And uh, it, it was really, you just felt something in the locker room before the game like this, some, something's different compared to the past couple of weeks, which was awesome. Man, <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's gonna be a good game. I can't wait to watch that on Friday night. But uh, you know, my I already I have some uh, my brother coaches there at Older, and he already said tensions are very high. So I'm excited. Is that a laptop in the room on the road? Uh, yeah, a laptop or phone. I'll yeah, I'm gonna be on it. Probably be going crazy, but. Any other questions for Luke? Thank you, sir. Awesome. Miles, it's uh, what did it feel like crossing that goal line for the first time, and then and then getting your second, you know, right after? Uh, it felt good. I mean, after that first touchdown, I felt like I was seeing the holes from, from a mile away. Um, o line did a great job blocking. That wouldn't happen without them. I just can't wait for next week so I can get in the end zone again.
couple weeks ago, it was said that uh, there was an explosiveness. Uh, it looked like there was explosiveness Saturday. So it, has that returned? And uh, how did it feel out there with, with you and Corey getting 100? I mean, you're probably going to win more often than not that way. Yeah, I feel like our, our whole room is uh, capable of being explosive. Um, I feel like we've shown that on Saturday. Um, just can't wait to work harder to be able to show the world that we can do that week in and week out. And that last week wasn't a fluke. A challenge when you hear something like that from your coach to go out and show like, you know, I, I've got some home run ability in me. Oh, you're talking about the, that tweet. Oh, yeah, that was that was a very boneheaded and immature thing for me to do. Um, he was right though. Like at that point, we hadn't shown any explosiveness in the run game at all. But you know, like I said, I just I cannot wait to get out there again and show him that that was not a fluke and that everyone in that room is capable of doing that. How much does having a guy like Corey help push you every day with having two guys that you know can go over 100 yards at any given time? Good. I mean, um, I feel like all of us in the room feed off each other. If one person gets a long run, somebody else wants to go in there and get an even longer run. Um, it makes us better in the end, and it make the, makes the whole thing go. How important is that for coming off a week with two running backs, yourself and Corey, both over 100 yards, to see what the offensive line is gelling together, getting those holes. How important is that for that offensive line to get this identity going for this offense? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good that um, we're starting to get this thing clicking. We had an early morning walkthrough this, this morning, um, and Coach Caldwell was talking about how every team they've had run this outside zone scheme. Towards the end of the year, it gets better and better and better, and then you can see that now that um, we're starting to make this thing go. I don't know how much you've seen of their running back, uh, uh, Ali. Uh, he had 282 against West Virginia. But if you add up what you and Corey did, that's 237. Do you, when you see numbers like that from somebody else, do you, do you go, you know, we can do that? I try to just do what I can do, control what I control. I mean, I don't really care about how many yards I have. As long as the scoreboard says we're up at the end, I can care less. You, you put a target on your back last weekend with both of you going over 100. You're going up against one of the better run defenses in the country. What do you need to do to kind of step it up that next level against Oklahoma State? Yeah, this is probably the best defense we're going to play. Um, as an offense, we just need to focus in on the little things, um, do our job, focus on our 111th on each and every play, make the common play with uncommon effort, and I feel like we'll do just fine. You pumped up playing in a, a stadium that like environment like you're going to see as the road team, I mean, it's it's going to be loud. It's going to be at night. It's homecoming. Like they they have a lot going for them in terms of the environment you're walking into. Uh, I've obviously never played there before, but ever since high school, I've always liked away games for some reason. I, I don't know why, but I mean, so yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be pumped. I mean, it's the last game I think on that night, um, so everyone's gonna be watching. It's a good stage, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be ready to play.